Please join me in welcoming once again Junji Sakamoto. Our interpreter tonight is Kimi Quinn, and I'm going to remind everyone that, and I hope you'll all stay, that what we do is we write our questions on cards. So if you have a question, please be sure that you find one of the runners on either side and get paper and a pencil and write your questions down so that we can get to those in a moment. But I shall begin. Um, didn't everyone feel a lot better about their own jobs after watching this? <laughs> um, that is an amazing, amazing, amazing accomplishment. 35 years, this is your 30th film, and you tell a story that is done in such a unique way. How in the world did you dream up this angle? え、この映画のプルーサをやったのは普段僕の映画のビーツ監督をやってる原田というもので ま、サキュラーパイオエコノミーって言ってましたけど、そういうお題で僕にオファー来たのは3年前です。あ、3 thought about uh, next movie. He wanted to have something which has something to do with the society, which can contribute to the society. Just It's not just about the technology or the skills in films. And uh, uh, he wanted to make something about the environment, nature, and uh, 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 biocircular economy and stuff like that. And then he came to me and uh, uh, offered to create a movie uh, with that theme. それであの、この江戸時代日本の江戸時代にその糞尿にまつわる、え、作業バイオエコノミーが、あの、西洋に先駆けて成立してたっていうのを知って、そこに興味持ってこういう時代劇にしました。and then I just learned about uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, environmental and the uh, uh, sub uh, uh, bio uh, circular uh, economy. And uh, in Edo period, that uh, people were recycling human feces at that time. And I decided to make a movie about it. Did you think there was contemporary resonance? Contemporary resonance. How does it relate to our non-biocircular society today?ふんにょを書く過程から持って行ってくれると思うんですけど、そこにお金は介在しないんですね。サービスですから。そういうのとその糞尿がこの時代はそのビジネスとして売り買いされたっていうことが一番西洋と違ってところなんですね。I think that uh, it was quite unique at that time in Japan that uh, it was already a business to recycle human uh, feces. Currently, uh, currently uh, we use the same thing, but uh, there is always, uh, in terms of recycling, government or public service involved. But at that time, it was a business. But it was not only about uh, uh, human uh, feces. 
I think we can say the word, really. Let's just say it, shit. <laughs> there we've said it. <laughs> so Mitsuo Harada, the, Mitsuo Harada, the producer of the film um, that he's mentioning, is actually someone that he's been working with for over 30 years, and he's been his art director for many, many films, and he's also been a Japanese Academy winning art director for a lot of films like Terumai Romai, which you all saw here. So tell me a little bit about why you decided that you would shoot in this beautiful monochrome in Academy ratio. Is that because you wanted to spare us the sight of so much shit in full living color? あ、逆なんですね。僕は将来モノクロームで映画撮りたいっていうのはずっとこう願い事としてあって、え、今回あの時代劇っていうのもあって、まあモノクロに挑戦しようと。いうことに決めました。で、先にモノクロームがあったんです。そこまで訳してもらっていいですか。So uh, it was the other way round. Monochrome came first. I always wanted to make a monochrome film. And uh, uh, with this movie, I wanted to depict the era of uh, uh, Edo period. It's a period drama. And then I decided to go with monochrome. で、準備が始まって、あの、美術のスタッフが、あの、運賃を作ってるというので、それを見に行きました。いわゆる小道具としての運賃を作ってるのを、あの、見に行きました。when uh, we started out the production, uh, I went to actually see the uh the uh say it, say it. <laughs> She can't actually say it. made as Prop. I went to see it. So when I saw it, it was very well made. So I realized that, uh, oh, I'm so glad that uh, it is monochrome. What, what did you make that out of? Because you threw it at so many people and sloshed it all around and scooped it out. What was that? あの、色々改良を重ねまして、素材も変えて、ただ最後の方にその頭からかぶったり、あの顔にこすりつけられたりするんで。<笑> あの、目に入っても口に入っても害のないものを作らなきゃいけなかったんで、いろんな食材廃棄される食材とか使って、ま、端的に言うと食べれるうんちに辿り着いたんです。We uh, went through a layers of uh, improvements actually and uh, we changed some materials to improve it. And uh, uh toward the end of the movie, uh sometimes that the characters had to uh, get the uh, shit Say all over it. on the <laughs> from the head and also uh, kind of uh, put it on the face and I wanted to make sure that uh, uh, it will not be uh, bad if it comes into the eyes uh, so we actually created the edible recyclable hook that would be a nice tie-in merchandise uh, <laughs> product, wouldn't it? And and while you're at it, you could do um, the scratch and sniff cards to go along with the screenings. <laughs> um, when you were trying to get the film made, surely it couldn't have been that easy. How in the world did you pitch it to potential funders and also cast with um, with a, a storyline that's very heavily um, feces oriented and and also you know um, in black and white this can't be something that most people readily fund how did you go about doing that So 
from the beginning, right? Yeah. Um, how they pitch the films and the producer and Harada got. 最初その自分のお金で、えっと、15分の短編を作りそれをパイロット版として長編につなげるお金を資金を集めようとしましたが3年前に15分だけたった1日の撮影で撮ってますクリスさんのお金自分のお金で Of this uh, movie. That was three years ago. So, I think that the people who are working on the film are not going to be able to do it. And the people who are working on the film are not going to be able to do it. However,、uh, we still had a hard time getting the funding. Maybe it was because、uh, there was so much、uh, poop in the movie. Maybe it was because there was so much poop in the movie. And、uh, two years ago,、uh, we filmed another、uh, 15 minute footage as a pilot. So, three years ago, we filmed another 15 minute footage as a pilot. So, three years ago, we filmed this、uh, 15 minutes that was toward the end of this movie,、uh, the scene with the snow. Two years ago, we filmed this 15 minute footage as a pilot. えっと、バディの船で糞尿を運んで、えー、あぜ道を歩くところのチャプターを2年前に撮りましたつ,つまりラスほとんどラストのクライマックスから先撮ることになったんですね。And two years ago,、uh, we filmed another 15 minutes of the footage、uh, that was about uh, uh, two guys getting together and、uh, they were on the boat and they, they started walking along the path. So, in other words, that,、uh, we filmed、uh, two short footages、uh, more toward the end of the movie. So, the two years ago, the two years ago, the two years ago, the two years ago, the two years a えっと、資金提供を受けて、えー、残りの60分分を取りましたただその資金的にはかなりタイトだったんで、えー、3年前1日2年前1日去年撮影日数10日合計12日で撮ったんですね。And, uh, uh, so we had two pilots. Uh, version of this、uh, movie, short forms. However, we still had a hard time getting the funding.、Uh, maybe it's because of the,、uh, the, the topic or the,、uh, what it's covered、uh, in the movie. And、uh, last year,、uh, we happened to receive some funding from a foundation,、uh, not from a movie company. And then、uh, with that money, Uh, we filmed another 60 minutes, and、uh, that made up the entire 90 minutes. And uh, uh, that's how、uh, we came to get this movie.、Uh, however, our budget was so tight, and we filmed uh, this uh, uh, first 15 minutes three years ago. It was only one day, another one day two years ago, and、uh, 10 more days. A、uh, year later, uh, uh, we filmed.、Uh, so, in other words, that we had only 12 days of、uh, production. That's amazing. <laughs>、um, I don't know how many of you noticed that two of the people in the film are related to each other. The Shuji character is played by Kanichiro. He's actually the real life son of. Koichi Sato, the father of Okiku, who is killed halfway through the film. And for me, one of the most amazing scenes is when he tells him about the world and how to, how to tell Okiku or whomever that the world、uh, doesn't 
limit his love for her. She's so wonderful. Did you, did you cast them so that you could have Koichi Sato taking a crap while he's giving his real life son this wonderful piece of advice? あの、親子共演はもう数年前に僕は一度演出してるんですね。今回は親子共演僕の映画では2回目なんです。ただやっぱり普段は親子の関係でしょうけど、やっぱりこう役柄に入ったら全く教えられ、あの、繋いでいくと。親の世代から子供の世代、その世界という言葉と世界というその関係なだけで、実際の親子ではあるけども、まあ、役柄的には全く私は意識してなかったですね。Well, actually, they are the real life uh, father and son, but uh, uh, I wasn't really conscious about it. And actually, uh, this is my second time to help them in my movie. Uh, they uh, had some roles uh, in my uh, previous movie as well. And uh, uh, what I wanted to depict was that uh, uh, Chuji was learning something about the world from my, uh, the uh, Okiku's father, who is the uh, one generation above him. And the concept of the world is transforming into uh, the second uh, layer of generation. That's what I wanted to express. We have a lot of really great questions that uh, many of them have been sort of semi-answered. So let me go to this one. Does a history like this have something to do with why Japanese toilets are so high-tech today? <laughs> to avenge guys like Yasuke and Shuji? <laughs> あの、ハイテクって言うと、ま、お尻をこう洗ってくれる。あの、えっと、お尻と <笑> もう言いますね。いわゆる肛門に病気のある人のためにいわゆる水栓のあのあシャワーが発明されたんです。Well, actually, uh, we have this type of toilet that washes uh, your behind, uh, which is a uh, high tech, but uh, uh, that started out to help the people with some uh, a health problem. Uh, with the, uh, that area. That's how it started out, I heard. <laughs> um, this, this relates to the love story, and really, I think you all realize what a beautiful love story that is. It's also a little bit taboo. Mm. So um, this question says, some of the mm. peasants wrote, uh, sorry, spoke rather boldly with Okiku. Uh, even though the father was fallen, he was still a samurai. Could they have gotten away with that really, historically, for real?血を流す時代でもあるんですけど、片や、あの、没落していく侍がいて、実際にその、え、屋敷に住んでた侍が、ま、没落して、そのまま庶民と同じ長屋に住むと。その時に、やっぱり長屋の庶民と馴染むために、
、あの、開け、障子開けてると、鍵をかけないで出ていく。という、そういう信頼関係の、あの、コミュ,コミュニティとか、ロー、ローハウスって書いてあった、ローアパートメントが。Uh, this was about,、uh, toward the end of a samurai period, and、uh, there are lots of、uh, fallen samurais as well. Uh, living in uh, that, uh, uh, the, at that time. And uh, uh, samurai used to live in big mansions, and uh, uh, some fallen samurai had to move into uh, the uh, tenements or the row house、uh, where a lot of the commoners live. And I, I am sure that the Okiku had to change her mind and that she had to think about how she behaves in、uh, that. Uh, uh, environment, and she probably h a v e to change the way she talks、uh, so that、uh, she can、uh, be the part of the community. You may have realized that、uh, they don't have even the locks on the doors in the community. There is a strong sense of trust in the community, and they have to live together. It can be really difficult to look at all that shit. Did it make some of the people, the cast and the crew,、uh, uh, did it make them feel sick while they were on set? Was there ever a, any sort of problem with that kind of thing? Yeah, I'm going to go to the show. I'm going to go to the show. うんちだらけの映画ってだからみんなあの笑ってたし実際臭かったんですよそのえっと廃材捨てる食材使ったりいろんなもの混ぜたんでにおいもううんちの匂いじゃないんだけど臭い発酵した匂いもしてたしみんなもう現場では笑うしかなくて今年今日のうんちは出来がいいねとかそういう話をしてました。Uh, well, actually, most of the people have never worked in a movie set with so much poop. And uh, uh, people were actually laughing every day. And uh, the, uh, even though they are fake poop,、uh, we had to use different materials, some uh, uh, fermented materials and different things. So it was still smelling. Smelling something. So, all we could do was just to、uh, laugh. That's what we were doing. <laughs> And I also know that a lot of people in Tokyo didn't grow up actually with flush toilets. So,、um, this is、uh, not a super past history. In fact, you yourself remember something. When you were growing up, that,、um, that you drew on for the film? Yeah, I was probably 12 years old, I was in the hospital, and I was in the hospital. And I was in the hospital, 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 and I was in the hospital. Uh, actually, until、uh, the age of、uh, 12 or 13,、uh, we never had any septic system、uh, growing up. And uh, uh, there were people who came to actually uh, get uh, the manure.、Uh, they picked up a manure from、uh, households. And one time there was a big typhoon and it got flooded and uh, uh, the, the poop、uh, came up. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> This、um, has been so wonderful. We're so, so pleased at New York Asian Film Festival that we could give you your first big international award. Do you have any plans to come back to New York and shoot here again? He shot here for Human Trust at the UN. まあ、今おっしゃってくれたように11年前と10年前あのニューヨークであの撮影をしたことがあってまあその一つがその UN の国連のえっと大会議場の撮影許可が下りてまあそこでも撮影し
単の経験がありますでその時にまあニューヨークに滞在してそれでまあ言えばうん普通に道を街を歩いてても僕に道を聞いてくる人がいたんですね。で他の国でそういう経験をしたことがなくてなんかアジア人がいるみたいなこう目線を受けることあっても道を尋ねられるってことはない。ということは僕はその旅行客から僕は地元の人だと思われたっていうこととそれぐらいニューヨークってその人種とかの多様性とかそれとその混沌とした様とかそういう意味においてはすごくその道を尋ねたことがすごく驚きつつなんかあの好きになったあの理由の一つでもあります。Actually,、uh, 11 years ago, 10 years ago, I got a chance to film、uh, here. And uh, uh, like Jim mentioned, that、uh, uh, I got a chance to film at the United Nations as well. And when I was actually staying and walking around in New York City, one time somebody came up to me and、uh, asked for directions. So I was really surprised that、uh, this Asian man, and I'm a foreigner, but、uh, they didn't,、uh, he didn't take me as a Foreigner or alien,、uh, just like a local. I love the diversity and uh, uh, accepting uh, like atmosphere of uh, uh, New York City、uh, so much. I really like this city. So, I'm going to talk about the New York City. I'm going to talk about the New York City. I'm going to talk about the New York City. So, I would love to come back to New York and then、uh, make a film, and、uh, I'd love to collaborate、uh, with the staff in New York as well. Thank you so much. Thank you for this film. Our Star Asia Lifetime Achievement Awardee, Junji Sakamoto. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry, I talked about the poop so much. <laughs> Thank you very much.